Hello, this is Daedalus with Nerds and Stuff, and today I'll be taking this Imperial Assault Darth Vader model from this to this. Now, before we get started into painting this beautiful model, I want to take a moment to thank some of our wonderful Patreon backers. This video wouldn't be possible without Patreon backers like you. If you'd like to become one, check us out at patreon.com slash nerds and stuff. Now, let's get started. So I've gone ahead and primed this model black, and I'm going to follow through and just paint a coat of black on underneath. That way, if I need to do any touch-ups later, and, uh, you know, I have to do those touch-ups in black, there won't look like there's two different shades of black on the model. Now, they may sound kind of silly. Well, Daedalus, black is black. I mean, you can't have black shading black, and you can't highlight black with black. This is true. But, because of finishes and pigment concentrations, sometimes when you paint black on black, and they're not exactly the same paint, you can see a difference between the two paints. It may sound crazy, I know, I understand, I get it, but go ahead and take some of your own black paint and paint it next to one from a different brand. I don't know if you've got multiple options, but uh, you could even just go like Sharpie next to your black paint and you can, you can really see a difference. So that's why I'm kind of putting this slightly darker black on top of a other black. And just a quick aside, we're just going to paint the base too while we're here. And I'll just kind of be doing this just back and forth between fun Star Wars and the painting technique so we can also kind of get a little, we'll say, overview of what's going on with that. So I just want to be able to cover up any mistakes I might make later on by just having this base coat done first. And now that we've finished the black, we're going to start laying up with a real dark gray and then just kind of keep brightening it up from there. And now that we've finished the black, we're going to start laying up with a real dark gray and then just kind of keep brightening it up from there. And now that we've finished the black, we're going to start laying up with a real dark gray and then just kind of keep brightening it up from there. I'll be honest with you guys, I've already done two videos outlining my process for painting black. So I'm not going to go into it too deep this other time around. I'll have a couple of cards pop up right now if you want to watch the tutorial or kind of the other model that I painted and really, really went over the, uh, the real black process. So let's take a little bit of time and just nerd out about some Star Wars, shall we? This is nerds and stuff after all. So, Vader is kind of a fun character. I don't know how much maybe you guys have really looked at him in the external lore or really read up much in what the old Legends was. You know, I was never a huge Vader fanboy myself. I think he's a cool villain and, like, uh, has a very tragic story, but I was always interested in other characters. To tell you the truth, I'm kind of a, a more of a rebel fan than an imperial one. And just a quick aside, we're just going to paint the base too while we're here. And I'll just kind of be doing this just back and forth between fun Star Wars and the painting technique so we can also kind of get a little, we'll say, overview of what's going on with that. And now that we've finished the black, we're going to start laying up with a real dark gray and then just kind of keep brightening it up from there. I will say, if you are a Vader fan, you should definitely check out the Darth Vader comics that Marvel put out. I did the first run before they switched artists. I, you know, I bought all of those and thoroughly enjoyed that story. All that business with Dr. Aphra and kind of the rest of Palpatine's potential apprentices. Palpatine's really kind of a dick, but I guess this is not new information. I will say that I, I think the stuff with BT-1 and 000 was maybe a little forced. I know they were going for like a, a foil of R2-D2 and C-3PO since Anakin always had R2 and C-3PO to work with through like the Clone Wars and stuff and they were just other voices to have that could be present in the story without being too distracting. But I don't know, I guess every character is present for a reason. Maybe they were just trying to sell more toys, maybe they did just want those foils present in the universe. I don't know if BT-1 and 000, or I guess technically 000, yeah, because you're C3, um, PO, so 000, 000, tell me what you think below, I don't actually know what the appropriate phonetic pronunciation is now that I think about it, but, um, 
Also, let me know what you think about BT1 and 000 slash 000. Or if you don't have any information, check them out on Wikipedia and then let me know. Because I'm just curious. I, I haven't had a chance to really talk with many people about the Star Wars comics. It's not something that comes up much in general conversation, that's to be sure. But it, it is something that definitely interests me. I do like comics and Star Wars, and especially Star Wars comics. I mean, best of both worlds, right? Okay, we are all wrapped up with the really dark gray, and now we're going to take another step up with a lighter gray mix, just to do some more light highlights on like the cloak and stuff. Now with this model, I am doing kind of the cloak separate of the armor, because the armor kind of has a different sort of color gradient, being more of shiny plastic than the cloak does, which is just kind of black cloth. So I decided to just do all the cloth at once, and then I would come back and do his armor so that I didn't accidentally paint the armor like cloth or the cloth like armor, and just kind of have it look really kind of weird. Textures are definitely something you really need to remember to paint correctly when you're doing stuff like this, because if you don't, you may paint the whole model beautifully, but when all is said and done and you're looking at it, it will just look really weird to the eye because you've painted fabric to be as shiny as hard plastic. It'll just, it'll look very strange. So you should be able to see the gray gradient start to come out on the model. And it's kind of hard to see because like when the light hits the model and then the kind of natural shine of the black color happens, that's kind of what we're painting. So it's a little hard to pick out sometimes. I know there'll be times when I'm sitting there trying to paint up a highlight and it's already at the highest tone it can be because of what I've got loaded on the brush, but it doesn't look like it because of the glare coming off my light source. So I think you should be able to see that now. Um, there's definitely a lot of lighter grade to it and I will be washing all this down so it's not going to stay super bright uh, to help blend the colors and also kind of darken that tone. So I'm just picking out some of these ridges along the shoulder where the cloak is kind of creased up a little bit just to help give it a little more depth and break up the monotony of the black. Oh hey, here's some fun Vader knowledge. Uh, this is more pertaining to the movies, so breaking the kind of fourth wall, but uh, I don't know if everybody knows this. It's kind of a fun little factoid, and I guess I've teased it enough so I should just say it. Uh, the actor that actually was the physical stand-in for Darth Vader was a bodybuilder by the name of David Prose, and he recorded all of his lines on set, and it wasn't until he was in the theater watching the premiere when, you know, Vader came on the scene and they heard James Earl Jones voice all the lines that he'd realized that, you know, all the work he'd done in trying to characterize Vader and, like, rehearse the lines and everything had all just been completely undone. Like, they'd taken his work and just completely re-recorded all the lines and the intonation and everything with another actor's voice. And while James Earl Jones did a great job, and I think may have been a better choice for Vader, he did sound a lot more intimidating, I bet David probably was a little upset about that. And in fact, he spoiled the, uh, the kind of the big reveal of, spoilers, Vader being Luke's father in Empire in the theater he was in, in like a couple of different towns. Uh, and because he was so upset about all this, and then when all was said and done and like Vader is dying at the end of Return of the Jedi, he finally has a chance to pull off the helmet and show Vader's true face. George Lucas decided to cast another actor, Sebastian Shaw, to be the face of Darth Vader and to do his last couple of lines in the entire series with someone completely different after you'd done all the work and put up with George through everything else, he then finally takes away your one actual, like, face film credit. I would be furious myself. And that's probably why we've never seen David Prose come through on, like, a uh, Comic-Con circuit or something. You know, he doesn't want to go and just be the, the body of Darth Vader, you know, signing autographs because nobody wants that. It just, I don't know. It would be really strange, I think, to be, like, on the the con circuit with the rest of the Star Wars crew, and including, like, James, and be, like, 
Oh yeah, I'm the body of Vader, so I'm gonna sign this picture that James Earl Jones already signed, and so then you can have the body and the voice side by side. Yeah, that would kind of just add insult to injury, in my opinion. So if you haven't noticed while I've been blathering on, we've started into doing Vader's armor pieces. So, uh, doing heads is kind of difficult for me. I really hate doing bald heads and getting, like, natural sort of uh, color gradients across them. It is just something I really struggle with. So I rarely try and paint bald models. You know, I will give people helmets or hair or hats or something because all those things are a lot easier to paint than trying to do just a straight dome. But I don't really have a choice with Vader. I can't put hair on top of Vader's helmet. Well, I, I guess I could, but it may kind of break the whole immersion for it being Darth Vader. So you're probably noticing that the color gradient has gone a lot faster on like his chest pieces and his leg greaves and kind of even his hit piece there. Uh, we are even a lot brighter on his helmet. And so now we're uh, done with those gradients and we're stepping into just a straight wash with Nolan Oil right out of the pot. I'm not worried about this going too dark because as usual I tend to highlight my grays up too high uh, so that I can make sure the highlights look good and then I can just rely on the normal oil to pull the color tone back down. It's sort of like just applying a filter on everything, and it helps blend in your layers, and it just makes everything look great. It's a bottle of good painting talent all in one little cup. So I have kind of been avoiding talking about one of the coolest Vader scenes ever to hit the silver screen or TV because I'm worried I may have talked about it a little too far. And so I wanted to wait until we'd be a little later in the video before I pulled out Rogue One. Now I'm not talking about his Mustafar scenes, although I do really appreciate the uh, kind of the tragic nature of him having a palace that he goes to, his sanctuary on the planet where he killed his beloved. The whole reason why he turned on the Jedi, honestly, that was probably a Palpatine move so that the pain would stay nice and fresh and be a tool that he could use uh, against others, kind of harnessing the dark side and stuff. And honestly, on that note in Mustafar, Vader should have known that he was a father because if he's making a joke like, don't choke on your aspirations while you're literally choking someone, that is like dad joke level 99. I mean, how do you not know, right? Anyway, let's talk about Vader's work chasing down the rebels on board Admiral Radice's ship, the Profundity. Okay, that was hardcore. I remember seeing that in the theaters, and I don't look at spoilers. I don't even really watch t trailers once I get past the first teaser, because I don't want to see anything that's going on like I want to be completely surprised and yeah god when he came out and then you hear the breathing the rebels all looking in the darkness and he ignite that saber oh my god that was cool that was like the Vader that you read about in the books the Vader that everyone is afraid of the Vader of the comics that is just indomitable and unbeatable there's just nothing that the normal person can do to even stand against a force like that. And uh, just as a quick aside, I am hitting a few metallic points real quick. I'm getting like his belt buckle, the edges of his saber, uh, some of the buttons on his chest plate, and like his two, we'll say, securing bolts on his face mask or mm, nubs or something, whatever's at the edges. I'm not quite sure what you'd call them. Now I'm just hitting a few buttons too with the red and blue. But that was, like, the coolest Vader moment ever shown. It was truly him in all of his ferociousness, just ripping through those rebels to try and recover those plans. And that was probably... Ugh, that was, that was really neat. I'm sure if, like, people weren't Vader fanboys before, like, that probably made a bunch of them. And those that were, they probably creamed the jeans a little bit in the theater seeing that go on. Is that was just really cool and I, I'm really glad they decided to have him present to show that little scene because that little bit with the transference of the plans and everything while it does potentially create a few complications for Leia's brashness like lying directly to Vader's face when he does get on board the Tantive 4 
I think it does lend a lot to her boldness and kind of, I don't know, it fleshes out the, the whole setting a lot. I like a lot of what that scene brought, and I can't complain about too much of it. Except that maybe it was a little short. I'm sure people would have loved to have seen a lot more Vader going on, but this wasn't a Vader movie. This was just uh, Rogue One. This was about getting the plans and getting on, not Vader doing Vader. Okay, so you may be curious as to what I'm doing now. I've been yammering on and tipping models over for quite a while, and so we're starting into the, the Saber part. We've done all the rest of Vader. He is complete, mostly. There's a few little odds and ends here that we'll do later, but now we need to do his Saber, and this is something that I actually really struggled with trying to figure out for a long time. I was thinking about it, I did a couple tests on just like some paper, seeing how things would look. It's so hard because a lightsaber glows internally no matter what angle you look at it, because it is round, it's, it's a cylinder. And so no matter which direction you come at, you always have to have that glowing inner portion. And you can't really do that with painting a flat surface. You can't have that internal glow however you want it. Like, it just, it's not physically possible. So, real quick, I'm just hitting a couple of light marks on Vader's eyes, just trying to make sure that they have a little bit of that ultra-gloss look. Um, so, I did some looking online and looked at a couple of different people's opinions, seeing what they've done, and I decided to settle on the Serastro method. You know, I really liked how his turned out. Um, I feel like it had a really, really natural glow to it. It just ended up looking really great. So I have mimicked his method with a little bit of my own designs along to do Vader's saber. Um, so it does provide kind of only still one point of real glow look to it, or we'll say one direction, but I think it, it turns out looking really good. It's worth it. So now we're just gonna, we got the white down. This was so that we could paint up some reds and make them look really nice and not need a ton of coats. So we're just getting the first initial red down and then we'll be actually layering this a couple of times to make sure we have a nice stable red color, really sound. I don't want any sort of white bleeding through because I really want this to be uniform. So I'm gonna be honest with you guys, there is kind of a little bit of an awkward angle coming up on the backside of that uh, lightsaber. Uh, you gotta be careful not to drag your brush accidentally or flick paint onto Vader. He won't appreciate it, he may get a little testy, and it is really hard to get that guy happy once he gets all grumpy. I mean, you can't do it with cookies, no chocolates, or you know, like, circus acts, nothing seems to do it. So, anyway, once you get done with the red, that was just kind of an initial base coat. Then you're following up with a real dark red-orange. I ended up using Reaper Phoenix Red, and this is following up on top of Mephiston Red. So, it's just slightly more orange. Uh, we're kind of kind of take a couple steps through that path to get to a true orange before we call it. So we're going to take this kind of this Phoenix Red, Mephiston Red mix, and we just want to get the whole saber with it. We built a super dark red, and now we just want to step into a little bit more orange because this is kind of how red glows, right? It's not a super dark red, it glows orange. That's just what it does. And now we're going to be stepping into just a straight explosion orange, which is also from the Reaper line. This one is really kind of, it comes out as a really watered down paint, so it's more like, I don't know, straight out of the bottle, I would call it more of a glaze, almost. So it's going to take several coats, and we're only kind of doing this on the half of the saber that is like the line of sight. So this would be the brighter portion, and we're going to kind of build up to that, and then start working down to just like about a quarter of the saber that we want to be the brightest. This is kind of where we're going to have our, our uh, like origination line take place. And to do that, I've actually taken this orange and mixed it with a little bit of uh, the Vallejo Game Color Silver. Excuse me, Vallejo Game Air Silver. And I'm just kind of streaking through the middle. This is what makes it look like it's glowing. Like, this is the big secret. Is coming through with just a little bit more silver, and then a little bit more silver, and then finally finishing up with just a pure silver line right through the middle. Really small. Now, mine ended up getting a little big. 
I didn't have enough kind of orange bleeding through onto the red like I would have liked, so I took some of that Mephiston red and I really watered it down and I just made it a real glaze out of it and then just kind of lightly brushed it on and then brushed it off so that some of the pigment transferred, which pretty much it toned down the silver, took out some of the kind of glow of it, but then also worked in the rest of the orange and brought that up a little bit. So it was kind of dual action. And now I'm taking that same watered down Mephiston red and we're doing a little bit of object source lighting now. We need to make this saber look like it's glowing. So I'm going through with this and it's a glaze now, it's really thin. And I'm just hitting all the spots that look like they would be in a place where the saber would glow on them. So this is going to be kind of the underside of his cloak and like part of his greaves. Uh, maybe even his leg. I'm even gonna get some up on the helmet because I feel like uh, thinking back on you know the glow in the Rogue One scene it was really dark and so he kind of illuminated himself with that glow and I thought that was really cool. So I wanted to kind of mimic that and I wanted to even have on his right eye a little bit of that same red glow where like his normal light reflective spot would be. So it's like the lightsaber's illuminated and then that is the light source that the eye is reflecting off of. And so I kind of, I put some on hoping that the white underline would pick it up and then I ended up getting too much so I just sort of brushed it out real quick. I thought I would have to come back later and fix that but it ended up looking pretty good actually. It did what I wanted it to do and I was pretty happy with it so I didn't touch it up afterwards because you could still really see that glow in it, that red, like it looked like it was reflecting the saber. So we're pretty much just going through it and we're just adding more and more layers and that's just how you build up color with the glaze. Like we're just adding more layers in the places where it looks like it would be brighter, kind of not trying to take away too much from the black tone, but also really showcase that that saber is glowing. And I feel like I did that really well. I sometimes do this little technique where I brush on the glaze and then wipe it off. It leaves some of the higher pigment, but uh, I don't know, I just, I like doing that. It, it turns out looking really well. Now I'm just taking one last pass to make sure I've got any important metal parts. Then I'm just gonna touch up that one eye. It just, I still wasn't quite happy with the reflection on it. Eyes are fun. I'm sure if you've ever tried to paint one, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You might take a couple passes at it to get your eye looking just the way you want, just the way you want it. And now I'm just touching up the base uh, sometimes when like the wash goes on you get this weird sort of streaky like look so just hitting it with that black again um, I'm not doing a base on these because these are still technically going to be used as game pieces for the Imperial Salt game instead of like my usual style game pieces so I didn't want to have the bases be a little too far so now I've gone ahead and sealed it and I just hit it with the testers dull coat and now I'm just going to take a little bit of gloss varnish, just brush on gloss varnish, and I'm going to hit some of these places that I really want to shine. And that's going to pretty much do it. Like, here you've got yourself a nice, completed Imperial Assault Darth Vader model. Uh, you know, it just looks really good. Thanks for watching this video and hanging out with me. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please do so so you can be notified when additional content comes out. And as always, until next time, happy painting.